All right, so the expenditure cycle is the flip side of the revenue cycle because one man's sale is another man's purchase, right? So in the expenditure cycle, much like with the revenue cycle, you got departments, you got documents, activities. You're going to have to get to know the controls that are going on within the company. And for example, we're going to assume that a company, our client, owns several retail stores. And in one of these stores, the person in charge of selling furniture decides that the store needs eight new blue dining room tables to sell. So, did you ever work retail? Okay. You know anybody that ever worked retail? Your girlfriend, your wife ever worked retail? Okay. So, when you're working retail, you're on the floor, and you try to be Johnny on the spot. So, you notice that, hey, we're having a big sale for the holiday weekend coming up, and we don't have what we usually have. So, let me request that they bring some of this over because, hey, we sold a lot of these last year. So that's just you being a little observant, right? But you shouldn't be able to go outside the company and order eight new blue dining room tables just because you decided that they had them last year during the sale and they don't seem to have them this year. So what does the auditor expect to find? they should determine on slide 44 that the person in charge of selling that furniture who, dis, who has determined that these items are not there, they should request the items from someone within the company before anybody goes outside the company and buys them, right? That would be better controls than, than just an assistant manager of a furniture department being able to go out and make purchases when they think they need to. So there's four documents within the expenditure cycle. Three of them match up very well to the sales cycle. You see documents two, three, and four? How the purchase order is going to be the sales order. Because one man's purchase is another man's sale. And the receiving report will be the bill of lading. It'll match up. And the purchase invoice and the sales invoice will be pretty much the same document. One sent, the other one's received. But the purchase requisition is the unique one in the purchasing cycle that doesn't have a corresponding document in the sales cycle. This is the one where if you're working on the floor and you notice that something's not where it should be, this is how you communicate with the rest of the company. You request items in your department and you send it to someone above you a purchase requisition. Okay, in slide 45, the auditor expects to see that if you noticed items needed to be sent to you, that the first step for you would be to fill out a purchase requisition where you would request the quantity, eight, type, blue, description, dining room tables, everything should be in that requisition. And then that requisition should be reviewed and authorized by the head of that department and then sent to the company's warehouse or the company's storeroom in hopes that the item is there so that they don't even have to order it from outside. And that purchase requisition starts it all off. Not the same as the purchase order because we might not need a purchase order. If the item is here, somewhere within the company, we'll get it over to your store. So on 46, a good internal control would be to have someone above approve the purchase requisition. There's your authorization. So in a way, it's almost like the credit manager's job at the sales cycle, where you send this requisition to your manager, and your manager comes back and says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we need that. Nice job, Chris. You, you're on the spot here. Or... Your manager could say, oh, yeah, remember we sold those last year, but we don't, we're not going to sell those anymore. So the requisition is kind of like that permission, the authority. One copy goes to your manager. One copy goes to the warehouse. So if your manager gives you the authority and says, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's see if we can get our hands on those before the sale. 
So then one copy goes to the warehouse. Warehouse comes back and says, no, we don't have those. And then one copy of that requisition should go to accounts payable because if these items ever do get ordered, accounts payable wants to know that they were authorized properly. So now the need for purchase on 47. If the warehouse doesn't hold the goods, if the warehouse doesn't hold the goods, the requisition is signed by the warehouse. That's their way of saying we don't have them and send them to purchasing. Send that requisition to purchasing with the warehouse signature on it, noting that these items are not in the warehouse. If you want them, purchasing's got to order them. So the signed purchase requisition shows that the goods have been requested but are not in stock. And we said a copy of the requisition's also got to go to accounts payable because they're going to want to know if they ever receive an invoice for these goods that they were authorized. So purchasing will review the authorization, make sure the request follows company guidelines. For example, you and furniture sales, the only thing you should be requesting is furniture. If a request comes in from you in the furniture sales department for men's clothing, mm, purchasing should ask for more details on that. Why is Chris in furniture asking for men's clothing? Better than women's clothing, I guess, but <laughs> 48. Purchasing follows the company policy for acquiring desired merchandise at the lowest possible price, which means you're now in the purchasing department with this document where purchasing is going to have to decide now who to buy from. And there should also already be a control in place. The auditor is looking for this. Purchasing should only be allowed to make purchases from vendors on an approved list in order to lessen the chance of collusion with outsiders. We don't want the purchasing manager to develop too good of a relationship with one vendor and always buy from that vendor and then get a kickback. So to avoid that, we want an approved vendors list to help with competitive bids. The other thing we don't want is the purchasing manager to have a business on the side and buy from his own company. And we would lessen the chances of that if we had a approved vendors list. So the auditor is looking for these controls. Purchasing should ensure both expected quality and lowest possible price. And because purchasing gets to make this purchase, they're going to prepare the second document in the cycle known as the purchase order. Right. So now we know two documents in the purchasing cycle. There's the purchase requisition, and here's the purchase order. Second document, purchase order. Purchasing will produce a pre-numbered multi-copy purchase order, and one copy of the purchase order is sent to the vendor because the vendor needs to know what we want. So it'll say eight new blue dining room tables on the purchase order that the vendor gets. Vendor knows that we need eight new blue dining room tables. And another copy of that purchase order goes to the company's own receiving room, which is a place where items will first come in before they get put into the warehouse. And the auditor looks to see if the company has an independent receiving room where items first come in or come back sometimes when they're not being sold. If they're sold and then returned, they'll also come back into the receiving room. Well, when they're first purchased, they should go into the receiving room. Receiving room should count them in before they go into the warehouse. This is for better segregation of duties. Receiving should be separate from the warehouse. Receiving should be separate from accounts payable. So one copy of the purchase order goes to the vendor. One copy goes to receiving room. And one copy of the purchase order has got to go to accounts payable, who will ultimately get this bill. They'll get a bill for this, and they'll want to know that they actually did order eight new blue dining room tables, because otherwise we could get scammed. If accounts payable didn't know that this stuff was actually ordered, and they get a bill, what if they paid for it without us ever ordering it? So accounts payable's got a big job. They're going to have to match all this up. Before accounts payable authorizes payment for these eight blue dining room tables, 
we want accounts payable to know that we ordered this and it was properly authorized. That's why accounts payable needs a copy of the purchase order and the purchase requisition. Remember that first document? They need a copy of that too. And now on slide 50, the receiving room, when those items come in to ensure proper system of checks and balances, the receiving room that takes initial possession of the items should be a completely separate department from shipping and warehouse. So receiving needs a copy of the purchase order too in order to serve as a authorizing document so that when the items come into the receiving room, receiving knows that they should accept them. Otherwise, what's to stop a meat truck from showing up and saying, hey, here's the steaks you guys ordered. And receiving wouldn't know if the company ordered them or not if they didn't have a copy of the receiving, right, of the purchase order. They need a copy of the purchase order over there at receiving to know that they can accept whatever's coming in off the truck. Now, to force the counting of the merchandise by the receiving room, because that's going to be their job to count it in, while we want receiving to know what's coming in so they know that they can accept it, we don't necessarily want receiving to know how many are coming in. So we'll leave the quantity blank as far as what's coming in. So receiving, they'll know that blue dining room tables are coming in. They're dining room tables and they're blue. But receiving doesn't need to know that there's eight of them coming in. Because here's what we want receiving to do, an accurate count when they come in. So let's give a copy of the purchase order to the receiving department, but let's have it be a blind copy and not let them know how many are coming in. Because if they knew how many are coming in, here's what would happen. Friday afternoon, truck pulls up and the guys in receiving, they're already going to happy hour with the guys from the warehouse. And they're going to say to the truck driver, oh, yeah, just put them over here. We're, we're heading out. Because if they knew how many were coming in, they wouldn't have to do an accurate count. They could say, oh, yeah, there were that many. But now they have to count them in and prepare the next document, which is called the receiving report. Go to 54. So the goods come in. The receiving room, who didn't know how many were coming in, had to do an accurate count, and they prepare the third document in the cycle, known as the receiving report. What was the first document? Purchase requisition. What was the second document? Purchase order. Here's the third document, receiving report. We got to know the documents. We got to know the order that they're prepared in, because when we do the two directional testing for overstatement and understatement, you got to know the answer to what if you start with the receiving report and go to the purchase order. What direction are you going? Are you testing for understatement, overstatement? Is that completeness? Is it existence? So that's why we got to know the order of everything. So the third document is the receiving report. And if the goods are accepted, the receiving room personnel will complete a receiving report. And that will provide all information on the merchandise. And copies of this receiving report will go to a number of different places within the company. Who's get, who gets a copy of the receiving report, they'll ask you on the exam. Well, certainly accounts payable needs a copy because they need to know that not only were the goods ordered, but they were also received. So because the goods were ordered and received, now accounts payable, when they get the bill, will know that it's okay to authorize payment. But until those items are received, accounts payable who might get a bill for these items, they're not going to authorize payment because we don't know that the items were received. So certainly accounts payable needs a copy of the receiving report. Who else needs a copy? Maybe inventory accounting if there's a separate inventory accounting. And the department that originally requested the eight blue dining room tables. Whoever was working there, you on the floor who noticed that we needed you're going to get a copy of the receiving report so that you can call the warehouse and have them send those items over to the store in time for the sale. So three documents so far. Accounts payable needs a copy of all three. They're the only one that needs a copy of all three. 55, the receiving report.
That's right. 58. Which of the following departments does not receive a copy of the receiving report? That's right, they both get a copy of the receiving report. All right, here comes the final document in the cycle. The purchase invoice. At some point, a purchase invoice will be received from the vendor. Now that the goods arrived, they're likely to send the bill now, right? They're probably not going to bill us before the goods arrive, but they're certainly going to bill us now once the goods arrive, right? Now, this is the fourth document that accounts payable needs. When they get this document, they go to work reconciling and matching up all four documents. That's a very important procedure that the auditor looks to make sure that accounts payable understands their role. That they need to match up the invoice that just came in. And if it says eight new blue dining room tables, that should match the receiving report made by the receiving department that said that eight blue dining room tables were counted in. And that should match the purchase order. That should say eight blue dining room tables were ordered. And that should match the purchase requisition. That should say eight new blue dining room tables were approved to be ordered. And if all four documents match, then accounts payable can authorize payment. Because if accounts payable doesn't do this reconciliation, then the auditor knows that it would be very easy for this company to be scammed. They could be the victim of a scam over and over again and not know it. Because if you and I were to set up some bogus company and all we did was send out invoices to companies all over the country asking for payment, now, this is for something we shipped you two weeks ago. Please send us the, the invoice. This is how much you owe us. And here's an envelope to make it easy for you to send us payment. You know, I bet we'll get a couple of checks. Even though we never shipped anything out. Because if a company doesn't do this reconciliation and they have some junior bookkeeper there and they see this bill, they might just pay it. And that will be a scam. Because we never shipped them anything. So why are we asking them for money? Because we're ripping them off, basically, right? And until they detect it, we may, have, we may catch them a couple of times. So if a company has controls in place like this, where the accounts payable department matches up the four documents, then they can't be the victim of a scam. Because the invoice comes in, What's the first thing accounts payable is going to do when they see that invoice? Look for the other three documents, right? And try to match them up. If they all match, then look what they do in the payables department. They prepare what's called a voucher. A voucher is just authorization, permission to pay a bill. Accounts payable or maybe vouchers payable, same thing. Whichever department the company uses, either accounts payable or vouchers payable, will authorize the payment of this bill. Before they matched everything up on slide 62, they keep what's called an open file, a pending or open file, to gather the four documents. Once they get the four, then they match it up over at accounts payable or vouchers payable, and then they prepare a voucher. A voucher is the approval for payment. Once payment's been approved, now you know that this is legitimate and not a scam. Hey, it's Darius. For more audit videos that you can actually learn from, visit cpaexamtutoring.com. You can buy them one at a time, no minimum. Get just the topics that you need. I would suggest these transaction cycles. These are the tougher questions on a CPA exam.